Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Absolutely welcome. I couldn't be any more honored that you've come here today, that you've asked me to be here. Um, my name is Mark Rogers. I'm the, as I mentioned before, I'm the director of the Da Vinci Machines and Michelangelo Exhibition from the Permanent Museum of Leonardo da Vinci in Florence, Italy. Yes, I mean, it was cool to learn about the stuff that I didn't know about, some of the stuff that he invented, all this stuff that I didn't know about. Uh, this museum in Florence, Italy, it, it's, it's called the Museum of Leonardo da Vinci, put together these traveling exhibitions to travel the world. They're very passionate about what they do, um, or they, what, what they did do. Um, they left legacy, which is pretty amazing and pretty, pretty interesting. So I found that pretty cool. Leonardo da Vinci had, when they had on all of his knowledge and all of his inventions that he had, they, he designed and had enough knowledge for the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, in his own lifetime of the 1400s. Most people don't know, and I think the message has to get out, that not only were Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci one of the two of the most prolific inventors of all time, but one of the greatest artists of all time, but they, all, they were not these monoliths in the sky, that they were all individual human beings that had to get by. They had to work with their own art and work within themselves to get their art and their message out. What has changed between 550 years ago and today? Not a lot. I mean, they have to, you have to push yourself every day in your life, and that is the message, that you have to find your own inner strength and your own inner development and your own passion and work on that every day, just like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci did 550 years ago. You know what Michelangelo, how Michelangelo referred to Leonardo da Vinci his entire life? He referred to him as the old man. And he said that he actually thought that da Vinci was out of touch with Rome and Milan and Florence of the day. It was just really cool how he came and like talked to us. He like spent his time and he came from, I think he said Italy, that's where he works. So it's really cool that he flew like all the way over here just to like speak with us and have this whole like art show in the Venice area. It's really awesome. He designed A-frames for the rowers. It's a little hard to see right here, but A-frames for the rowers that would go on top of the rowers. So as they were getting closer and closer to the boat that they were at war with. Oh yeah, I love seeing uh, all the old things and all the old ideas. It would have been unbelievable. Even though he designed war machines, he hated war. He called war bestial madness, is what he called war. Well, I think it's it important for them to just to see that how much math and invention is incorporated into art. Just how brilliant yeah, he was. Yeah, just get to everything, Vinci, all of the things he did other than the Mona Lisa. Yeah, what, did, what did Da Vinci need? He needed money. Just like all of a sudden, he would just contract out his design talents to the dukes and lords and kings of the day to design military weapons, both offensive and defensive. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how pieces of artwork or just anything can travel through the ages and still touch people as time goes on and still contain like passion. But you know what Da Vinci said about this design 550 years ago? He wrote down, he said, this design was sinister and evil. And he said that due to the very evil nature of man, somebody's going to surely take this design and use it against someone and cause harm against someone. So unfortunately for us, do you know what he did? He just abandoned the project. Yeah, that was, that was very cool. I mean, just to even learn about anything that I didn't know about. I mean, it was just kind of cool. His first passion was painting, but his second passion was flight. He wanted to be able to fly like a bird. From the beginning of time, we all wanted to fly like a bird. Yes, I'm inspiring them to find their own inner dimension, to find their own inner Michelangelo, and to, and to and I hate to say it, but to turn off these cell phones. And they need time every day in their life to dream and think and imagine and create and wonder. And the glider pilot would attempt to hold on to either side and attempt to manipulate the wing in flight. It's just interesting how they like still have an impact on us, even though it's how many years later, they're still like part of our time and we still like recognize them and learn about them. Okay, the statue of David, Michelangelo, is probably one of the most famous sculpting, one of the most famous sculptors in the history of the world. Well, I do um, hope they're inspired to follow their passion, whatever it is, and to work, work hard, hard and Michelangelo. keep going. And you're going to discover your inner Da Vinci, the Da Vinci that's inside of each and every one of us. And you'll discover the Da Vinci in you. And how cool is that going to be?